Welcome to the Miss USA 2023 finale recap. I'm Danny Walker. Thanks for joining this episode. If you would like to see the extended version with even more insights, then sign up for memberships where you can get access to that. Let's start with the opening. I missed the beginning of the show because there were so many issues that I had streaming the show and I know that many of you out there had, so I really feel for you. I tried watching the CW, apparently there was a delay. I tried watching again and it's still not working on the app and it's not visible on the desktop edition. So I wasn't even able to see the beginning, but I did hear that the intro for finals was the exact same as it was for prelims, which is kind of common. I like the intro for prelims, but I do wish that during a final show that it had been big and grand and I wanted to see an opening dance number and I wanted a live performer. Look, I get it if a Grammy award winning or chart topping artist is out of the budget, but I still feel like we should have someone. How about we take a cue from other national pageants like Miss Universe Thailand and bring back former title holders who are very, very talented performers. Why can't we use them for an opening number? I don't see any reason we can't. I also missed that in 2022 that Elle was a part of the opening number dance and I love that. I love featuring the reigning queen. As many of you know, they did not stream the state costume contest this year. A lot of people were upset about that, myself included. They showed very, very quick clips of it at the beginning of this show, but I was really disappointed because we didn't get to hear about the meaning behind it. So much goes into those state costumes, so I'm really sad we didn't get a great showcase of it. Since it was difficult for me to find this online, the clips I'm gonna show you are from somebody else streaming the show, so the quality isn't that great. I apologize for that. We are still waiting for them to post the finals edition on their YouTube page. One thing I did really appreciate is that Adrian and Kelty, the stage hosts, looked fantastic all night. I love their hair and their makeup. I love the wardrobe. I do however wish that they would have promoted the wardrobe designer or the stylist for the show. I love when we give that recognition on stage. I really do have to commend the host though this year as well because they had so much energy and that's tough to do when your venue is half full. So this is how the venue looked this year. When I was there in 2019 for the show, same venue, it was packed. So I was really disappointed to see that. Somebody get Jordan Kimball's manager a raise because that man was providing commentary for Miss USA with zero experience in commentary for pageantry. That man was not even looking in the camera. He was just looking around, probably wondering how he got the job. Well, you know what, Jordan? We were all right there with you, okay? Audiences too, we were wondering. What happened to the days of commentary from people who are in the pageant industry, people who have experienced firsthand? Where were the formers doing the commentary for the show? That's where they should have been. Where are people in the fashion and entertainment industries during this segment? I don't know, but they were nowhere to be found. One thing I was waiting to see was the B-roll footage of the activities of the week. And they intro this and they were like, let's go behind the scenes to see what the contestants have been experiencing. And you know what it showed? Nothing. It showed exactly what I thought it would show. There were essentially no activities for the contestants. They went to the bowling alley, which they do all the time. At least in the past, they had bowling parties with Teen USA contestants and also best buddies. I would love to have seen that again. Essentially, all the B-roll footage this year was just them in different locations, only shooting B-roll, not actually participating in any activities. They just dropped them off at different spots in the hotel at Lake Tahoe, and they were like, here you go, pose, pose work the camera, do a spin turn. That was it. I was so disappointed for the ladies because I will say Lake Tahoe is absolutely gorgeous, but right now it's kind of freezing. So you don't actually get to enjoy the water, but they could have definitely hosted something like, oh, could you imagine like an outdoor picnic on the water and the ladies being in fabulous, glamorous outfits that of their choosing and not just t-shirts and leggings. On Instagram, the ladies talked about some kind of swimsuit photo shoot. I was hoping to see that. I was hoping they were gonna release images, but no, nothing, not on social media, not during the finals. Instead, we just saw this one group photo of them beside the pool. We also saw clips of them downtown, and I will tell you, I have been to Reno, and it was scary downtown. Honestly, I'm just being frank. I did not feel very safe down there. And as you can see, the streets are practically empty. There's really nothing for the contestants here. To reiterate my point, at least in 2019, the contestants did have a swimsuit photo shoot with the sponsored swimwear brand on Lake Tahoe. 
I thought that the images could have been a lot better. There was so much more that they could have done in such a gorgeous location. They could have made it look like a high-end luxury swimwear photo shoot. We didn't get that, but it was possible. We also used to see little clips of the contestants doing interviews throughout the week. Sometimes they would talk about important issues. Sometimes they would talk about fun topics. I think the fun topics are more important for finals. I think that people enjoy watching those a little bit more, especially if you're trying to attract a new audience. I'm gonna run down a quick list, but in the past they have visited Graceland, had helicopter tours, they went to PBR, they had sponsored swimwear shoots, they had opening number shoots for Sherry Hill My Year, as well as a Sherry Hill gown photo shoot. They attended Las Vegas shows, Best Buddies events, there were swimsuit fashion shows, gown portraits, events like tubing. They went to the 4th of July Farmer's Market, a water lagoon day, dinner outings around the host city, tours of historical sites and museums. They worked with Operation That's My Dress with Sherry Hill. They visited the governor's mansion. There were tea parties, cooking classes, cocktail welcoming events, and there was even a pre-show red carpet. There were also so many photos of the contestants throughout the week that are released from backstage, behind the scenes, prelims, or at different events. There used to be a press site as well. That stopped my year at Miss USA. Very sad about that. Unfortunately, contestants never had access to that, but fan pages did, and they were kind enough to share those images with contestants. So I got photos from my year at Miss USA. Where were those photos this year? Normally, we see the contestants release the photos or the video clips of themselves on stage at the preliminary competition and we had none of that. Whew, that's a lot, but now let's get into our top 20 and my thoughts on the swimsuit competition. First, let's talk about those capes. Not a fan. They were not giving Elevated. They were not giving Miss USA or Miss Universe. To me, they were giving Amazon. Illinois loved her. Now she was giving me Victoria's Secret, okay? And I loved that. DC had better energy during finals. Oh my gosh. But that for me was like her starting ground. I needed to see even more than that. Texas, great energy. I could just feel her, great facials, working it, loved it. She was in my top five before she stayed in it here. And honestly though, I have to say, ladies, you made the show. You made the show. You did. You carried it. California, I have to say, I really felt something with this opening look that she did. And I feel like not very many people talked about her, which is surprising because California is quite like a pageanty state, but I think she did phenomenal. Pennsylvania. I, I love her and I have loved her, but I was like, oh girl, not the arm sway, not the arm sway for swim. Oh no. But she had a nice twirl here though. And honestly, overall performance to me, she was, you know, advancing. Hawaii, just such a queen. The spin turn, the performance. A lot of people were saying she's like Arbany 2.0 and I can kind of see that. Kind of like an Arbany performance, but I was loving it. Florida, nice walk, great hair flip. This is the performance I expected of her. This is tough. These ladies were doing fantastic. Virginia really got the crowd going and oh my gosh, the face, the face. She needs to compete somewhere else. She really does. Utah, I just wrote, oh yes, queen. Oh my gosh, she delivered as I thought that she would. What have I been telling you guys this whole season about her? What have I been telling about you? I'll, I mean, I love to say it, but I told you so. The hair flip, the face, all of it. Nevada was gorgeous, okay? I think that this was a stronger performance than prelims, and I just loved her hair. I loved her hair. She's stunning. Washington was on my edge, but I was so excited that she made it. She's a part of Pageants Northwest director group, and that was my group when I competed for Miss USA. So I'm definitely always cheering for Pageants Northwest Queens, and Washington actually hasn't placed since 2004. So this was super exciting. Wisconsin, yes, stunning. Okay, I I've had her in a five for a while. Well, like in my ideal five, right? Like I can't pick for the judges, but I loved her and she really did not let me down with this performance. How stunning was she? Maryland is just so pretty. I just want to see her compete somewhere else. It was just such a competitive year, but I loved her and she had a really great exit. I will say this felt like a normal pageant in the US and I can't quite put that into words unless you were actually here in the US and unless you have experienced Miss USA in the past few years versus pageants everywhere else in the United States. So pageants everywhere else I feel like are like straight pageants. It's like if you have the performance, you're making it versus the IMG era and then the Crystal Stewart era that everybody's kind of talking about. Things felt different. They felt a little bit more 
orchestrated and they weren't shy about this it's in our contracts that they get to pick the ladies that are moving forward and sometimes it seemed that some of the contestants that moved forward did so because of something about their brand there was like something special something unique about them that the organization thought would make for good tv versus solely basing the placements off of their performances so i really felt that this was performance based that made me really, really happy. Layla Rose talked about having transparency in the organization. And I don't know if you had this feeling as well, but as I was watching the overall competition, yes, there's a lot of room for improvement, but I didn't feel like they were really marketing or pushing any particular contestant or contestants during pageant week. When we saw pictures, when we saw B-roll, when we, when we saw video clips, it was not just the front runners primarily, as it was in the IMG era. And that was a change that I have been waiting for. And honestly, for me, that was probably the best change that she has brought so far to the Miss USA organization. I just want her to keep going. Also, why didn't we have Zuri Hall as the commentator? Why didn't we bring her back? Like, even if she's not the host, she should be commentating. She's so fantastic. Let's talk gown. Oh gosh, my clips for this are so terrible. This is all I could find, friends. I apologize. And I don't know how long it's going to be until they come out with that finals clip, so I don't want to keep you waiting. You can look it up, I'm sure, at a later time. Illinois, beautiful. What I saw was choppy, but still, even from the little kind of screenshots, it just looked consistent for what she did at prelims. She's stunning, but it was just a competitive year. DC is so stunning and I felt like she was making such a comeback, but I felt like it was just too little too late for her. Texas had a gown change, which is interesting because the word on the street is that they were not allowed to have a gown change. And also, why do I keep seeing the same design of a gown? Why is it that the gown I envisioned or a variation of it for my time, my imaginary time at Miss Universe, why do I keep seeing it? Why do I see it now everywhere? Ryan, why did you have to create my dream gown and why does everybody have to recreate it? But Texas, just absolutely stunning. It was a great gown change. California was so elegant, and honestly, I think she's just underrated. Pennsylvania finally got her gown reveal that she was looking for, I think, in prelims. In prelims, she came out with it on her head, and it just, like, it came off too soon. But she got that during final, so I was really excited for her. Stayed the same gown, beautiful, flowing. People commented that Beyonce actually wore this gown during her Renaissance tour. So I found out that this style was recreated by Giovanni for Pennsylvania. And what's interesting is I just released an episode about couture inspired gowns in pageantry. I wish this one would have made the cut. Hawaii stuck with her same gown, but it was beautiful. She was giving me queen. She was giving me Miss Universe. She's so, so stunning. What a phenomenal performance. Learn from this one. Virginia, oh my gosh. When I saw her, I was like, oh no, I need a gown change. I need a gown change. What did I tell y'all? What did I tell you? I didn't know how the judges would take it and they did not take it very well. She should have been in a top five. Honestly, I don't even know who we would have swapped out for her, really, because the ladies were so incredible, but she could. She could have been in a top five, I think, with a different gown. Utah was just perfection to me. She had a great cape reveal. I was wondering how she was going to do it because the walking pattern was different. And oh my gosh, why didn't they get to stop for gown? Someone tell me why. I don't know who decided that. I don't like it. It's giving me Miss America 2.0. That's what it's giving to me. We need to take a lesson from countries like Thailand and the Philippines because, oh, and France, oh my goodness, the angles, the staging, all of that, everything that comes together to really showcase the women in those gowns because so much goes into it. We need that. Rant over. Noelia, fantastic though. Once again, what did I tell you guys? Just fantastic. Love the gown. This was made by a Venezuelan designer. I believe his name is Dije Galavis. I am not positive how to pronounce his name and I apologize. Nevada loved her gown and I realized what it reminded me of. It literally reminded me of smoke. The cape wasn't just a dark black. It was kind of like a gray. And I was like, she's like a smoke show. Washington, I talked about this. She was on my edge for prelims, but I do have to say I do love this gown and I wanted to include it in my preliminary episode, but I didn't because I didn't put her in the 20, but I loved this gown. Stunning. Great choice.
Wisconsin had a fabulous hair change. I liked her hair for prelims, but I thought this hair was even stronger and it really, really worked for her because she is so facially beautiful. I loved it, fantastic idea. Marilyn was great here and I think her performance was better than prelims, but I think she also got outperformed. Somebody also left in a comment that this year there was no acknowledgement of Bob Barker being a longtime host of the show and his passing. And I was like, you know what, you're right. Cause he's iconic. And I feel like they should have done a little quick little in memorial of for Bob. And another thing, did I miss it or was there no parade of gowns? Am I crazy? Where was the parade of gowns? We need a parade of gowns. Let's get right into our top five. So they each got asked technically two questions. The first was like a warm up question, which I love the warm up question. And their warm up question was just, ladies, how's your spirit? How's your nerves? Loved it. But the real question that they got was, as a brand ambassador for Miss USA, what will be your contribution to the organization? So let's hear how each contestant answered. For our warm up, Wisconsin said, honestly, I have not been nervous this whole competition because I've just been so excited and prepared and coming from a small town in Wisconsin to being on the Miss USA stage, I'm just glad that I can set an example for others to do the same. Love, 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 fantastic. I was like, okay, like already, great start. Here's her answer. My contribution to the organization will be proving that anyone can defy age limiting opportunities. As one of the youngest contestants here, I have paved the way for myself. From being 15 years old and starting my platform, Catwalk for a Cause, towards now becoming successful in the industry as a free agent, I have done that for myself. Pageantry creates a foundation not just to implement change, but to do it yourself, and I have been able to do that. So with the Miss USA organization, I think that I align with the goals, and I'm ready to get to work tomorrow morning. Starting off strong with our onstage answer competition, okay? I have to say that. And the other thing I have to say is, what, what did I say? After reading her bio, I was like, she's going to talk about age. She's going to talk about age because it's relevant to the age eligibility changes, so... Called that one. Texas, very cute. Her first answer was, hello everyone. I actually just had the craziest moment backstage where I ripped my dress, but I'm here and I'm excited to be here in the final five. Now for her second answer, the one that counts, she said, I'm here to honor my mom. She passed away back in December due to ALS. I learned to always have hope and be resilient and never give up. And that's what I'm doing today here, is not giving up on myself, not on my dreams. And that's the message I wanna share with everyone, to not give up on yourself and continue to fight for your dreams because we only have one life to live, so we need to make the most of it. Overall, great message here, very encouraging. I do feel like she was getting a little bit repetitive there in the middle, so that can definitely affect her score. Utah's first answer. I am feeling so at peace right now. I've been working for this moment for years and years, and I'm just so grateful to be here. I'm more excited than anything. And for her real question, she said, I believe the ability to connect with people is an incredibly important asset that a Miss USA should have. The United States of America is an incredibly diverse country, probably one of the most diverse in the entire world. So being able to connect with everybody is important. As a bilingual Venezuelan American woman, I plan to connect with that community of people because the United States of America is a diverse country and as a Miss USA needs to be able to represent every community, no matter their background, their race, their ethnicity, anything and I would like to be that Miss USA. So I was a little bit worried there. I thought that she was gonna start repeating herself and not be able to wrap the question, but she did so beautifully. And I think that she had a really, really strong ending here. She was on brand. She talked about being Venezuelan American. I knew she was gonna say that. And then she said, and I would like to be that Miss USA. So right there, she's asking for the job, nailed it. Hawaii was super likable for her first answer. She said, oh, you know, I always have Hawaii in my heart, so I'm just bringing the aloha spirit to the stage tonight. So cute, so cute. Next she said, well, I'm a program director for a nonprofit called What Makes You Feel Beautiful, and it's my passion to be of service, to uplift the younger generation, to teach them the importance of cultivating self-love, and I believe as Miss USA, I can reach the whole nation to show kindness, to be a lending hand in this society, and believe in yourself. Great answer. I felt overall Utah was still going to win, but when I heard this, I was like, okay, Hawaii is now solidified first runner up for me, which is where I was thinking she would end up. Pennsylvania said, I feel surprisingly very calm right now. I feel so grounded in who I am and I'm so proud to be up here representing my state. 
And she said, I think for me, my greatest contribution is to give back to young women, specifically women of color who may feel like they're excluded in this world. I think that it's really important standing here as a black woman in the top five of Miss USA that I be the face of representation for the brand of Miss USA moving forward. And that is something that I intend to do. Overall, she had a great answer here. She was confident. I was really, really impressed by all of the ladies this year for onstage question. But I think that overall, for me, Noelia was just edging everybody out from the beginning of the competition. So unless you pull something out that's really, really going to be a big mic drop moment for everyone, it would be hard to overcome Noelia's scores. Also, I thought it was very interesting for the final look that they had the little clips of them speaking to the camera, and I like that they gave them a prompt. It seems like they asked them, what would being Miss USA mean to you? And I love that question. It's so open-ended. It gives the contestants full reign to essentially just brand themselves in that moment. So it's not really a leading question uh, that I think that we've seen in the past for little UCAP videos and, and things of that nature. I love that this gave the ladies a chance to brand themselves, to find who they are, and to present themselves in the way that they want to be represented to the audience to the judges. I think in the past in UCAPs, the questions were quite leading and they led in a way that allowed the organization to use creative editing to brand contestants any which way they want, even if that wasn't the intention of the contestant. This is something very similar to what happens in reality TV shows. One thing to note is that Noelia did speak a little bit in Spanish in her clip, and she used all the branding points. She talked about the definition of pageantry, being a force for good, and a transformational leader. And I thought it was brilliant. I was like, yep, there you go. I mean, what, what more do we have to say? She's ready for Miss Universe. Also, when they did their little walks, they were all holding hands afterwards, and I thought that was so cute, and I love the sisterhood. I want to commend Morgan Romano. Really tough to just step in as a Miss USA. I feel like we tend to forget our Miss USAs that take over that title when our queen wins at Miss Universe. I think they deserve so much more credit for what they do. So just, you know, good job for her. Very excited for her. Loved her farewell gown too, by the way. She was literally like a princess. She was like Belle. For everybody who was asking about Arbany and why she wasn't there, I feel you. Yes, I agree. I think that she should be there but I think she had a great reason for not being there. She walked for Michael Cinco for Paris Fashion Week. Okay, that is such a huge deal, such a big dream. So I get it, I get it. Arbany was probably like, look, Morgan, Morgan's got it covered. She's got it covered from here, no worries. So I, I, like, how exciting is that? I'm so excited for her. Also, I thought it was interesting that they read the Miss USA Creed, which was never read, read to me or given to me at any point. I thought that was really interesting. I, I liked it. I liked it. I thought it was cute. Uh, people talked about also that there was a scepter given to her at crowning, and I was very confused about that. It was a very, like, Miss America-esque, very, like, old school. And, well, I'll save it till the end. So our placements were fourth runner-up, Texas, third runner-up, Pennsylvania, second runner-up, Wisconsin, first runner-up, Hawaii, and our winner was Utah. Very, very excited for Noelia. Honestly, I have watched her growth for a long time now, for years. She actually was competing, I believe it was either collegiate or UNM, and I did an episode years ago about my favorite headshots, and she was in that episode. So I've been aware of her for many years. I knew she was going to win a USA state title. I told her that at Miss USA in 2021 that it just had to be her time and to not give up. And she didn't give up and she did it. I, I told her it was hers to lose this year at Miss USA. And I'm just very excited for her because of all the work I could see her putting in. All of the attention to detail I greatly appreciated. I have very high hopes for her at Miss Universe. I know that a back-to-back -back is very, very difficult. And it will be. But my thoughts when I was looking at her preparation versus many others in the class. Not, not everyone, but many others. Was that she seems quite poised and ready to go for Miss Universe. In terms of her packaging, her branding, her preparation. And uh, she's just at such a good starting spot. So I'm very excited for her. Can't wait to start sharing more about her in my Miss Universe episodes.
So the other thing I wanted to mention quickly was the social media this year. Oh my gosh. They posted a photo of her on the official Miss USA page and they captioned it, there she is, Miss USA. If you're a pageant fan, you know why that's a problem. There she is, Miss America. That is the the iconic line from the iconic Miss America song. We cannot be doing that. We cannot be taking other people's hashtags and iconic songs. It is 4 p.m. the day after crowning and they still haven't even updated the bio saying that Noelia from Utah is the current Miss USA. Almost a day later, no update. Not great friends, not great. As I said, this episode was kind of like a part two from my other ones. I hope you check out the other one and lots more of my Miss Universe coverage. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all the support. I'm so grateful for you and I hope that you're gonna come back for a lot more episodes.